Hey, what's going on, everyone? Um, I wanted to discuss today, uh, you know, a secondary market phenomenon that I've seen twice now in the last two weeks, actually. And I want to get your thoughts on it because I definitely know how I feel about it. And, um, you know, wanted to get the general consensus from the group on secondary sales etiquette. So the situation that I'm describing here is so in today's day and age, um, you know, a lot of the knife groups or even watch groups that I belong to, you can kind of take it upon yourself to make a, you know, organic post for the item you're selling. Like if I wanted to sell this JK V4, beautiful knife, by the way, um, you know, I could make my own post about that, but I would say depending on the group and then sometimes it's almost better when they do a daily buy, sell, trade post and then you comment below what you have to sell. Um, when you do comment though, um, you know, pursuant to commenting on any Facebook post, um, you can only put one picture and a description and um, you know, you could conceivably put multiple pictures, but then you have to basically reply to yourself and then, you know, kind of keep the, um, you know, keep the string alive. So normally what I do is I'll just post one picture, you know, the one that kind of shows the full package, like I would post a picture of this with the box and paperwork, etc. And um, that would be my one post. If someone was interested in it, they would either do one of two things. They would one say in, you know, like just comment in, or they would say PM if they wanted to make, in, you know, a lower offer to me. But the other thing we see is if people want more pictures of the knife or more specific pictures or different things, whether it's a video like I've had, which again, it's, it's no drama. Like if I have the knife with me and I'm at home, it's no problem at all for me, you know, as a seller to take a video, say, you know, some guy, Steve wants to buy this. I can be like, Hey Steve, this is my JK version 4.0. It's in good shape, you know, kind of show the action, open, close it. Um, I also could, you know, get a post-it note, write my name with the date, et cetera, send that picture, whatever, just, just so that they know that I'm real, that I'm not trying to scam anybody. But what I've seen was uh, in EDC Go No Go, it was this person who, um, you know, similarly on a buy, sell, trade post, he said, hey, I'm interested in, in purchasing your knife. Um, can I get more pictures? And the guy was like, oh, like, I don't have any pictures right now. I'm at work, but I can send them to you when I get home. And um, within that time period, which again, a normal day at work, um, somebody else commented in on the post and the guy sold it to that guy. So basically the first buyer wanted more amplified information, more pictures on you know what the knife looked like. This second guy just saw his picture and was like, I like the price, it looks good, I, I just wanna go in. And so the guy ended up selling it to that guy. And in my mind, it's like, yeah, money talks. Like the first person to go in and you know pay the money, they're, they're the ones that um, that should get the knife. But, um, you know, I, I want to get your guys' thoughts on that because I know it can be a sticky situation. But similarly to, I know the guy that wanted more pictures was butthurt because he was like, I was going to buy it, but I just needed more pictures, whatever. In this day and age, I mean, it is a buyer's market. And um, for sellers, I think you really need to take advantage of the money that's in front of your face. Like, I mean, unless it's a buddy that you're holding something on to for, or if you get a down payment, so you could, you know, say it's a $400 knife, hey, I'm going to send you 50 bucks to hold it. If everything looks good, we'll continue on. But, you know, certainly money, money talks. And, and I think you need to take advantage of that because I have seen a ton of buyers flake out on things for one reason or another. So I definitely don't fault the guy that sold it to the other member that had money. And the other example that I'll use of that is, I ended up selling, so I had a Rolex Submariner, it was 1991, really, really beautiful watch. Um, i have been talking to this guy for a while, but he basically was like, oh, you know, this was, I think, Friday. He was like, I need it until Tuesday in order to buy it. I had just taken a red eye back from DC, was working on like four hours of sleep. I was like, cool, that works for me. I'm in no rush, but let's discuss the details tomorrow, which would have been Saturday. Saturday rolled around didn't hear anything from him. Sunday rolled around, didn't hear anything from him. I don't know him. I didn't feel like I owed him anything. Again, like this is over, you know, this is about a $7,000 watch. And um, this other guy came in and was like, yep, that's exactly what I want. Here's the shipping label. Um, you know, just send me a picture of the wrapping job, etc. I'll take it or whatever. I sold it to him. And then on Sunday night, I reached out to that guy that um, was interested on Tuesday once he moved some money around. And, um, 
man, he was like attacking like my character saying, oh, you know, we had a deal, blah, 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 we did this. And then a few of my buddies vouched for me. He was like, you know, that's basically dishonoring their vouch. All that, I mean, just very, very dramatic stuff to the tune of, I explained the situation. I was like, hey, like money talks, like you didn't put a down payment down or anything like that for me to hold it. Like there's, there's literally more fish in the sea. Like I hope you find one, but he just couldn't help himself. Just keep listing like, you know, what a shitty salesperson I was. But I really do think in those two examples, um, you know, it, it's certainly a buyer's market. If you really want something, pick it up. Um, if you want somebody to hold something for you, definitely ask them. But I think absent a down payment, um, I, I don't really think that's a good business because I have seen so many people flake and not my biggest, like it's not a fear, but it's an annoyance would be if you know, you took somebody on their word, you ended up holding something for them. Another buyer comes up that's like, I'll take it right now. And you, I, sorry, like uh, I have a deal worked out with another person. That person flakes out at the end of the day. Uh, I think it's, it's way worse for the person that's trying to sell an item. So definitely just wanted to get your thoughts on that. Um, I'll keep this video short, but um, yeah. What are your thoughts on that situation and, and what would you do? Cause uh, I think I know the answer, but um, you know, these are situations that we're seeing on the secondary market right now. So appreciate y'all tuning in. We'll see you next time.